Um, episode 8 Colorful Slimes. Let's recap the problem statement. We have slimes of n different colors and we want to have all n colors. Uh, to achieve that, we can do two types of actions. Uh, first one is to catch a slime of color i. We can choose i, and that action takes ai time. Well, depends on the color of the slime we want to catch. And the second action is to cast a spell that increases by one the colors of all the slimes we have previously caught. Uh, here increases uh, in the sense like modula n. So we have a cyclic order of colors. And we shift each color to the next one in that order. And casting one spell takes x time. We want to find minimum time to achieve uh, the situation when we have uh, the slimes of all n colors. Uh, n is up to 2000 and uh, times needed to do actions are uh, strictly positive but big. Um, so on the left you can see some examples. If uh, time to cast a spell is very big compared to times needed to catch a slime um, it's easier to just catch all of them one by one. Uh, the order doesn't matter, so we can do it in any order. Uh, but in the second example, uh, the time to catch red slime is very big. So we would like to uh, get a slime of red color uh, indirectly somehow. So, for example, we can uh, catch uh, a slime of purple color and then cast a spell to get a red slime. <clears throat> so, we could, for example, catch a purple uh, slime, cast a spell, and then catch uh, purple and orange slimes. But it turns out that uh, since catching an orange slime is even faster than catching a purple one instead we should catch uh, orange and purple then cast a spell so before casting a spell we have purple and orange and after uh, the orange will become purple the purple will become red and if we would have red it would become orange but since we don't have it um, after the spell we will have one purple and one red slime and then we catch the remaining orange sli uh, slime okay so casting a spell is kind of weird like it changes a lot we get some colors we lose some colors um, yeah it, it is given how it happens but like it, it is hard to understand what uh, actual changes um, will happen and like what, what should we do next so we probably need to change perspective to look at that differently so let's think about what is the situation in the end in the end we should have a slime of color i for every i that slime was caught at some moment Right? Like casting a spell cannot increase the number of slimes. It only changes the colors. So in the end, there will be a slime of color I. So it physically must have been caught at some moment. What was the color of that slime when uh, we caught it? Well, it can be uh, basically any color. Uh, assuming the, then uh, that we cast uh, an appropriate number of spells afterwards. So we don't know, but we can say that it was of some color. Uh, let's call it CI. So uh, 
the slime that will be of color i in the end was of color ci when we cut it. Then we obviously spent a uh, ci time to catch that slime uh, of color ci. But then we should cast some spells after we cut it. How many spells? Well, uh, each spell increases the color by one modulo n, so we must do like i minus ci modulo n increases. So there is the smallest non-negative number uh, that satisfies us, and then we can increase it by n uh, some integer non-negative number of times. So we must have casted at least uh, that many spells during the whole process. Like we must cast this many spells, uh, maybe plus n several times after we caught uh, a slime of color ci that will be of color i in the end. We might have casted something before we caught it, but uh, we couldn't cast it less than this number of spells. Okay, but we don't know CI. Again, let's change our perspective. Let's fix the number of spells we will cast during the whole process. Let's call it K. Then we know that this number, or like its uh, corresponding remainder modulo n, is between 0 and k, which we can rewrite as ci is between i minus k and i. Well, but we can choose any ci from that segment. Uh, so if we cast k spells and we want uh, to choose ci such that i minus ci is between uh, 0 and k, we will count that many spells from then. We will catch a slime of color ci here. So after that we will color exactly i minus ci spells. So ci will become i. Okay, so for fixed k, then for each i, we can choose any ci from a segment. Uh, which one we should choose? Well, the cheapest one, the one we can catch the fastest. So the cost to catch a slime that will become color y in the end is minimum of costs on that segment. So, uh, for fixed k, the cost will be k times x, because each spell takes x time, plus for all uh, colors from 1 to n, uh, the minimums uh, on those segments. And then we should minimize that uh, over k, like we can choose k as we want. Uh, Okay, what k to choose? Well, making k greater than n doesn't help us because even when if uh, k is n minus one, uh, this minimum already tries all the values of i, and then we will just uh, circle over the same values that will not decrease minimums, so this thing will stay constant. Um, and we will only increase this amount. So k is at most n, actually at most n minus one. So we can try a linear number of k's and for uh, each of them, we should calculate this value, which is a sum of n variables. Uh, each of them is a minimum on a segment of length n. So that gives us uh, of n cube algorithm right away. Uh, 
uh, and it's simple to make it our fan squared uh, by not recalculating minimums each time. For example, uh, you can like, store the costs for all k's, uh, initialize it with k times x, and then for each i, calculate those minimums by running to the left and taking minimums with each aj uh, and then updating like uh, adding the current minimum to the cost for given k that will be our fan squared which is uh, good enough to get accepted so there is not like an interesting algorithm here or some clever idea but uh, it's a nice problem to see like we we make observations we change our perspective each time and we try to understand more about how the optimal solution looks like and how can we calculate the cost for a solution? Uh, and that's how you should be solving problems. Like the important part in this problem is getting here, like getting here. Making it often squared is not interesting. Uh, the interesting part is to obtain some polynomial solution. And that is done by carefully analyzing what happens and trying to look from the other angle. We looked at from the other angle here, like we understood what, what happens in the end and how can we arrive there. So we achieved this. Like we looked from the other angle and understood something about the solution that we should cast at least this many spells for every i. And then we changed the perspective again. So we have proven that the number of spells is at least this. And let's look at it the other way. If we fix the number of spells, that limits our choices of CI. And yeah, it turns out that that's the only limit on CI and that gives us a solution. And this is clearly not DP. And this is not greedy per se. Like, okay, this part is greedy, right? We, we are choosing the cheapest one on segment, but the whole solution is not greedy. It's just some observations that chain to get to this formula. That's it for episode 8. Thanks for watching.